One of the biggest hearts I know is Taylor Dang. She is an open book, open hearted, so wonderful. And that started a friendship. You went to school and then when did you know that you wanted to sing or you just kept singing the whole time? Talk to us about how that- Oh no, I mean, honey, I, this is that story. That's, this is the story of a, of a little girl who um, had, uh, you know, my parents are first generation Holocaust children. Their parents were in wars, depression, and the word survival, like understanding wars and struggle. So to them, my father came out of a war, met my mom, the Korean War, and she was, her mother was moving her month to month to month. So they couldn't afford to pay the rent every month in some of these, you know, in most of any apartment for that matter. So the word struggle was 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 kind of embedded to that my parents when they found each other really quite you know at 19 and 20 21 years old it's after a war it's after their version of you know high school and they gravitated towards each other and then decided to get married and um brought us on Long Island I was exposed because my mother was a singer as choosing to be but honestly, what career was she really making out of it? She was trying to do radio and stuff. And my father, they were avid theater goers. So whether it was the PAP Theater, Manhattan Theater Club, any of these most off-off-Broadway projects so and, and performing centers. So I was exposed to the, the arts as a very young age. My first records was not really my 45s, but that's what we had then. We had 45s. So we had jukeboxes and 45s, and that's... So by four years old, my ear was already kind of tuned. My dad gave me a little transistor radio, I think like four or five years old. So that's just just kindergarten. And I remember the first song I heard on there was um, My Sharia Moore from Stevie Wonder. And I remember saying this little voice going, I, I see another world, there's a way out. And the way out was my home was kind of violent, kind of very, again, these are children that are just learning to survive and yet they had a family of their own. So there was a lot of anger in the home and things like that. And this ended up becoming the radio, my little room. I was the only girl, there were two other, my two other brothers. So it became a place for me to go and hide and when I heard Stevie's voice, or then it turned into Karen Carpenter's, anybody builders on the radio, it saved my life. Like it gave me a place to go. But then I started saying, these people look really happy. Couldn't see them through the radio, but I go, they sound happy. They sound like their lives are so, and I felt like this lonely, oldie girl, like just listening to the music. So my ear was lending itself. I was mimicking now Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> I was mimicking any voice that came on the radio, whether it was Karen Carpenter. And uh, by kindergarten, that would be what, five years old? Six, five and a half? So, you know, they had sing along with the piano. So I was like, somebody see me, see me when she's like, who would like to maybe be like, you know, I saw Mommy Kissing Santa's. Who would like to be in the holiday concert? They're gonna pick one little kid from, they're gonna pick one child from, and I'm like, I was very so shy, I didn't wanna raise my hand, but I would stare down, sing a long time, sing a long time. And I was like, see me, see me, pick me. And they picked me. And I had my first solo in kindergarten. So yeah, I pretty much knew right then and there, I'm gonna be a rock and roll star. That's what I would say.